never seen them, I will. Her name is Zora Visage and she is now the head of built environment in the University of Victoria. She was a lecturer at UNSW while I attended. And uh, in the first year, I was really uncertain about myself, surrounded by bad boys, actually. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Zara was given a uh, speech at uh, one of the university functions and I was refreshed to hear from a female lecturer. She was a structural engineering lecturer as well, so all the rest of the structural engineering lecturers were male. They all look the same as well, I don't know why. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I, I can say the first one pretty much, you know, like Zaha Hadid, because being an architect, she is a very dominant figure in the architectural um, industry. Also, uh, being the first female to achieve, you know, the um, Prescott Architectural Prize, she's uh, very, very kind of, um, she has the vision that I see uh, and not uh, actually being, you know, set back, uh, you know, by criticism and also, you know, by others um, or have even, you know, the peers in the industry to say, um, you're not doing things the conventional way, it's, it's literally too out of the box. So in that front, she was very courageous and, and she had very strong self-belief to um, not afraid to face with all those, um, you know, challenges mm -hmm. ahead. I think curiosity is what led me to STEM mm -hmm. because there's so much out there to look at and the first couple of years in university very exploratory you get to learn a bit of all things and then you can make a decision what you want to specialize in I grew up in a mining town in the UK mm -hmm. and I was very interested in mining and mining engineering, earth sciences, that sort of thing. Um, I had the opportunity to study at Campbell School of Mines, which um, is in Cornwall in the UK, and um, they're known all over the world for um, engineering excellence. Um, and that sort of gave me a great foundation. Um, when I graduated, there was a bit of a downturn in mining in the UK, um, so I got involved in um, tunnel bore machine DBM tunneling. And um, yeah, I've sort of had the opportunity to work on a number of, of great tunneling projects throughout my career. So it's it's good, and I've had various roles across various mm. disciplines. Um, so it's always interesting and always a challenge. It's good. Um, I think investigate all the opportunities. Like I've said um, just now, there are many disciplines and avenues in step. You don't have to be super academic. You don't have to be super good at maths. It's, we're not just scientists and engineers. Um, there's lots of disciplines within STEM. Um, we've got, I think I said previously, we've got people that look at human factors and social sciences and environmental uh, monitoring, stakeholder engagement. So there's a number of different roles um, if you're interested in STEM industry that are not necessarily highly technical roles. Um, I think try and find a, a teacher or a, a mentor, um, someone that you can talk to to discuss opportunities and reach out to the industry. There's a number of industry groups. Like CSIRO have um, a number of groups and projects. They have like a young scientist magazine that's available and um, Engineers Australia as well do a lot of initiatives with high schools and science competitions and things like construct construct area, I can never say that, <laughs> um, and the bridge building competitions. So there's lots of initiatives out there where you can um, engage with people in the industry and engage with these industry societies where you can get in touch, build, start building your network and get uh, mentors and role models that can help you get a career in STEM. If you're already interested and have an interest in STEM and in particular engineering, I think that's probably the hardest hurdle to overcome is recognising that initial interest. So for any girls that are interested, I would definitely recommend it and by all means encourage them to pursue um, their interest and potentially a career within 
engineering because they have so many opportunities available to them. And it may not necessarily be engineering, it could, they could lead into construction, it could lead into so many other different fields because there are so many roles that can come off from, say, an engineering um, an engineering course or it could be a construction course, whatever it may be. So um, I would just encourage them to pursue their interests. And um have all the core values uh, and have a look at what technical skill you wanted to actually uh, you're passionate about but build around it all the other soft skills that you need uh, to progress your um, STEM careers and there's no um, stopping in terms of you don't have to just stay within the one sector as you go forward and I think that's something that I wanted to actually um, just you know, communicated to all the younger generations that is, is, you know, it's nothing is in silos anymore. And the way we look forward in the future is uh, a very different um, and a very exciting future ahead.